Now, last night, we had Professor Matthew Goodwin on the programme, and both he and I have been speculating that the next set of net migration figures will be at an all-time high. Well, a leak published in today's Daily Telegraph suggesting that in a couple of weeks' time, when the net migration figures come out, there will be 675,000 people. That is double the highest ever year before Brexit. And just think about this. Net migration ran from 1945 to the year 2000 at about an average of 30,000 a year. And we're now talking about pushing up towards three quarters of a million. Oh, and that's without those crossing the channel in boats. Is it any wonder we can't get GP appointments? Is it any wonder that our kids can't get onto the housing ladder, yet nobody in Westminster even wants to talk about it? Maybe that's because those that make our laws generally have little understanding of the real world. I was vociferously opposed to the fox hunting ban that came in in 2004. It seemed to me it had nothing to do with animal rights or the welfare of foxes, just a deep dislike from an urban majority for us against a significant, quite significant, majority living in the countryside who wanted to pursue fox hunting part of their way of life as it had been for centuries. Well, blow me down. As a few years go by, we're now told that by 103 vets who published a paper to say that in rural England, the fox in some areas is in danger of completely dying out. Why is that? Well, if we're not hunting them with hounds. We're shooting them at night with lamps, with long-range rifles, um, and we're actually taking out a lot of the fitter foxes. It seems extraordinary that you ban fox hunting and the numbers decline. By the way, none of this applies to urban foxes, which are increasing. And the hypocrisy of the whole thing. I mean, the RSPB, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, they shoot foxes because if foxes are there, where there are ground-nesting birds, they will do vast damage. And yet, because they recognise a long-range rifle shot at night is unlikely to get a clean kill, guess what they do? They send dogs in to finish them off. The whole thing is absolutely crackers. Alex Proud is a club and restaurant owner, a Telegraph columnist who has opined on this subject before. Alex, can you believe that we ban fox hunting and we now have a shortage of, of rural foxes? Well, obviously, the absurdity of that is wonderful and, and a perfect illustration of, of what happens when, when stupid legislation, as you rightly said, the tyranny of the tiny majority over the very large minority and geographically very separate lifestyles. That's what happens when this sort of stupid legislation occurs. As you rightly said, legislation that was nothing to do with preventing cruelty to animals. I mean, let's face it, if you want to prevent cruelty to animals, let's talk about how we kill our cows and look after pigs and how we breed chickens and various other farmed animals and worry about that far more than we do um, foxes in the countryside. And, and, and it, it's, it's a, it was an absurd piece of legislation. It's to do with some very ancient sense of class war that toffs hunt and that, that posh people get on horses and they beat the poor people from their horse, which is obviously absurd because actually hunting in the countryside is actually an extraordinarily cross-class pursuits. It's nothing to do with posh people or poor people. It's it no. tends to do with country people. No, I go, Alex, I go to the Boxing um, Day Hunt Meet, uh, West Kent and the old Surrey and Burstow. I go every year. I've been going for decades. And it's far from a group of posh people. It's an incredible cross-section of people who are there. Although, of course, they're not allowed to hunt with dogs. They hunt a trail. But, Alex, you know, I was on the march. There were over 400,000 of us that marched through London to say, let us get on with what we want to do. By the way, I've never hunted a fox myself, but I absolutely support the right of others to do so. But I wonder, as a restaurateur, whether what we're really seeing here is a total change of our thinking about animals. I mean, I bet you have vegetarian and vegan dishes now on your menus. Yes, I do. And, and, and again, I, I, I live and let live. I, um, my, one of my eldest son is a rampant vegetarian vegan I, I'm, I changes from time to time i have nothing against it and i you know it's an, it's an extremely healthy lifestyle choice uh, 
I, I, I tend to feel that the, the, the concept of live and let live is fairly important. I'm far more interested in legislation about healthy farming of animals, not using uh, steroids to make animals grow at huge rates. You know, the steroids in animals come through to us, and that's why we have uh, the, the problems we have now with, with becoming um, um, uh, with antibiotics, etc. So I'm much more concerned about that I am, and the humane killing of animals for farm is much more important than this ridiculously tiny subject. And, you know, um, hunting still goes on. Obviously, it's drag hunting now, and I'm glad that the hunts have survived and the hounds have survived, and also a part of the countryside and our history has survived. I, I just don't really like it when a tiny majority uh, rules a very large minority. I, I, mean, know. I might I get know. in trouble with you there, Nigel, because we, we could mention Brexit, but I wouldn't do that on your show. Uh, you'd be welcome. Alex, you want to come in and argue about Brexit with me? You're welcome any <laughs> day of the week. But your point that these urbanites who call themselves liberals are actually the most illiberal people that have ever lived in our country. Alex, thank you.